Greetings and salutations and welcome to Unfortunate Sods. I'm Albie and today I'll be showing you how to paint battle ready white scars. Now white is generally a notoriously hard color scheme to paint. Battle ready also implies quick and easy to paint. So how are we going to make white quick and easy? Well my dudes, watch on and find out. Begin by priming your Space Marine in your choice of primer. I'd suggest a white primer, in this case I've used Corax White. Afterwards, base coat the miniature in Othuan Grey. So Othuan Grey is an off-white, it is a layer paint, so you will need two to three thin coats for this. Um, I have already painted this miniature, um, or rather base coated this miniature in um, also one grey. So that's what we're going to be starting from. Once you're done base coating your space marine, we're going to paint the joints of the marine. So places such as between the, I guess behind the knee, so these these little joints here, maybe just where the armpit is, just around there, and um, behind the backpack or on the back of the marine. Um, we're going to paint all of those sections black templar contrast. Now unfortunately with most contrast paints you'll find that if you leave them for a while they will most of the pigmentation will actually settle in on the bottom. So give the paint a really good shake. Now if that doesn't work what I might suggest just to make sure this is well mixed is get yourself some mixing balls. So something like the army painter mixing balls right here. Just pop one of these into the contrast paint and give it a good old shake. So using a medium layer brush, we're gonna paint Black Templar straight from the pot. So only need to get a little bit on the brush. If you do make any mistakes, just go back over it with Ortho and Gray. So we're gonna paint places just like here with Black Templar contrast. Now Black Templar contrast is quite a dark, very dark uh, color, so it will spread quite nicely, or rather, it will go quite nicely against the white. So you just paint all these places here with Black Templar contrast straight from the pot. Again, you know, like I said, if you make any mistakes, just go back over it with Orthorn Gray. So once you're done painting your Black Templar contrast, you'll be left with something like this where you'll notice, you know, in the joints and where the armpit is, behind the elbow, just where the hand is, they've all been painted with Black Templar contrast. So what we're going to move over to next is give the entire model a wash, just to get some of the recess and the definitions sort of enhanced. Now, you could do this with apothecary white contrast paint, which most people would recommend you do. It's not a bad paint. However, I kind of want my white scars, and if you've seen some photos up on Twitter, a sort of more darker, grimier look. Sort of like a they've been in combat for a little bit, and they've all, all they've been able to do is you know give, give their armor a bit of a spit wash, basically just just quick rundown just to get the the symbolism shown back again, and then off to war once more. So to do so, what we're gonna do is create our own contrast paint. We're going to need contrast medium, and we're also going to need non-oil. So it might sound quite weird, you could argue non-oil and Lemire medium, but what I did was a one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and non-oil. Now, if you're painting an entire army, I'd recommend you get something like the Tamiya mixing jar which holds roughly about 50 mils of paint. It says 40, but you know, 50 is just, just, just about there, right? Now, the, both these pots are roughly about 24 mils. So what I suggest, if you're painting an entire army, get yourself a brand new pot of contrast medium, a brand new pot of non oil, and pour the entire contents within to your mixing jar and give it a good shake. I've already done this. So I've, I've been left with something like this. Give it a good old shake. And we're gonna paint this over the entire model. So just like you would a shade, get some of this, you know, our custom medium, or rather 
custom contrast, I should be saying. Get some of your cu custom contrast and just paint it over like you would a wash over the entire miniature. If uh, if you notice any pooling, just you know, with your brush, just move it away and just paint the entire miniature with this little contrast paint. It will act similar to, to a contrast paint where you know it will tint the color like it normally would, but also provide some shading. And that's what we want. We we want the armor to be, you know, a little bit of a more of an off-white than it already is with some sort of shading. So just, you know, paint it all on. Just all over the miniature. Don't miss any spots. And just go to town. Once you're done painting your custom contrast over the miniature, you'll be left with something like this. Now, the paint is still, you know, still quite wet. I'm going to let that dry for about half an hour. And all of this was done with a medium shade brush. So we're going to let this rest and we'll come back. Now that the custom contrast has dried, we're going to be left with something like this. A quite a strong sort of off-white or rather even grey uh, white scar. So what we're going to do is bring back the white onto this model. So we're going to dry brush Prexeti white onto the model. Now this might bring up a little bit of a, I guess, some chalkiness when you dry brush the entire armor, but that's fine. Because what it's going to do is sort of return the armor to a sort of shade of white that we want whilst leaving in, you know, these dark recesses as well as a little bit of, you know, dark gray across the entire armor, giving it that sort of, you know, they've been in war and, well, they've all they could do was you know, hose down their armor, a quick wipe down or with, of whatever grime they can to return, you know, some of the the armor back to its original form. So, you know, appease their machine spirit of the armor and what have you before going back to war. So, let's do that. It's bringing a little, you know, towel. I'm going to pop open this and just get you know, a little, whoops, just get, you know, a little bit of paint on our brush, on a little dry brush. Now this is an army painter dry brush. Just get a little bit, put that off to the side, and wipe out most of the excess, like so. That looks about right. We're gonna quickly dry brush onto the base. Just make sure that you know it's not too covered on the brush. There we go. That that looks about right. Perfect. Now, some people like to, you know, dry brush on their skin a little bit. Just, just do it on the base. It's a lot easier to sort of see when you've got, you know, I guess uh, when you've got hard edges. So all you need to do now is just dry brush the model. We're going to start with the legs. And just go, go against any sort of hard edge you have. And if it does, you know, go across the armor a little bit, you know, that's what I'm talking about. A little bit of chalkiness on that little knee pad right there, which isn't too bad. It's returning a little bit of that white back onto the model. Let's just dry brush. And so we're going to dry brush the entire model. Don't worry if you do cover a little bit of the, you know, the joints of the where the black contrast is. You could argue that to be a little bit of some highlighting there. So most people will argue, you know, don't dry brush on flat panels or on Space Marines line. Um, what do you call it? Uh, line highlight it, and you could do that. But if we're pumping out, you know, an army as fast as we could, oh, that that method is a little bit slow. So we're just going to dry brush. Now remember, less is more. It's a lot easier to sort of, you know, apply more paint gradually than it is to return and you know fix up the where we may have gone too heavy. So do less on your on the brush and dry brush just more. Now that we've finished dry brushing the model, the white of our armor, of our white scar, is complete. And as you can see, it's brought back, that little dry brush has brought back the white to the model while keeping it a little bit of a sort of a dark and grimy sort of color. So we're going to move on to the, I guess, finer details, shall we say. So we're going to paint the pouches, we're going to paint in we're going to paint them black templar contrast just to match what i've already started with the rest of my my army so we're going to paint you know 
the weapon pouch we're going to have as black template contrast same here and then we're going to paint the weapons lead belcher and we're going to paint the symbols so like the imperial aquila and the indominus sort of symbol here i'm going to paint those red i'm going to paint them with mephiston red so for painting the imperial aquila the red that white scars generally have for it we're going to be using a broken toad size one brush so carefully just with your mephiston red and just carefully paint it on to the imperial aquila Now try not to make any mistakes with this, as it'll be quite hard to sort of patch it up, especially when we have to dry brush again to return back to that sort of dirty white or spit clean sort of look. So just take your time, and just carefully go over the Imperial Aquila. With the red done on our Imperial Aquila and Indominus symbol, we're going to move on to the pouches of the miniature. So. We're going to paint this in Black Templar Contrast. Again, just straight from the pot with the same Broken Toad brush, just to give us a little bit of extra control, and just paint it on. With the Black Templar Contrast on our pouches and gun holster painted on, we can now move on to the next sections of uh, the Marine. That being said, that's going to be the weapons themselves and we're going to paint these oh and the grenade don't forget the little grenade on the back here we're going to paint all of these in lead belcher so just get a bit onto your brush remember two thin coats as our lord and savior has always said and just paint it on i've got i've returned back to our medium layer brush but you can use whatever brush you want for this step doesn't have to be neat just be very careful when you're getting close towards sections where the um, white armor is so just above his hand and below so just paint it on remember two thin coats with the silver or rather the lead belcher painted on as you can see on both the weapons and the little grenade back here bit hard to tell actually on the grenade but with the weapons done we're going to move on to painting in the other details so we still have Let's see if I can angle this right. We still have the handle to paint. We've got the purity seal. And we've got, that should be lead belcher, I think. Actually, no, we're gonna make this retributor gold just to make it stand out a little bit better. You don't have to. You could actually reduce the amount of colors you want. So you could just make this lead belcher, but I think I'm gonna make this retributor gold. So we're gonna start with the purity seal. We're gonna do the little, I, I guess, parchment here. We're going to paint that in Wraith mode. We're then going to paint the actual seal itself in Screamer Pink. We're then going to paint the handle right there. I'm going to paint the handle in Wazdaka Red. Now, Again, if you want to limit the amount of colors you're using just to make this a little bit quicker, you could just use Wazdaka Red for both the Purity Seal and the handle itself, or you could use Screamer Pink for it instead. It's up to you how you prefer it, but I'm going to use both, and just to give it a, a little bit of a different look. So, starting with Wraithbone, just carefully paint the Purity Seal. Avoid getting it onto the white of the armor. If you have to, rotate the model around. Maybe upside down might make it a little bit easier. Just carefully paint it on. With the first coat of our parchment, or rather the purity seal, still drying, we're going to move on to the handle of the weapon. Once we paint the handle of our weapon, we're going to go back and apply the second thin coat. So let's go take our was darker red and just carefully paint it on. Just be quite careful. Try not to get any onto the white. We could get it onto the silver. That's not a problem. We can make a mistake there. 
but it's a lot harder to clean up the white than it is to do the silver, especially since we still haven't done our washes. So with the parchment and the handle complete, let's do the seal of the purity seal. Again, we're going to do that in Screamer Pink. And Screamer Pink is quite a strong sort of color, at least stronger than white anyway. Um, so you could almost get away with one thin coat. Just carefully paint it on. Let's just rotate it just to make it a little bit easier for us and just paint it straight on. While our seal is drying, we're going to get our Retribute Gold, or sorry, Retributor Armor, I should say. We're just going to paint that onto the, I guess, bottom part of the holster. So again, two thin coats, just grab a little bit and just carefully paint it on. Again, try to avoid making any mistakes. If you do, just go back over it with uh, Auth1 Grey and then paint Black Templar Contrast. Now that our base coats are complete, we can start painting in the definitions and shading of our, I guess, weapons and every other part that we've just painted. So starting with the Imperial Quila, places that we painted Mephiston Red, we're gonna use our one-to-one -one mix of non oil and contrast medium and just paint that and shade it shade there as well where they're going to use a mixture of non-oil and non-oil gloss to paint our silver or rather metallic areas so that being said the weapons and the bottom of the holster itself as well as the little grenade can't forget the grenade admittedly I rarely, if ever, decide to use frag and crack grenades when playing 40k. Might explain why I might sometimes forget to paint that on some of my miniatures. So again, for the Mephist in red, 1 to 1 ratio, contrast medium and non-oil. Same way that we painted the armor, we're going to use that same wash to paint the Mephist in red areas. So just using a medium layer brush, just carefully Get a bit on it and just paint it onto the red. Now, if you do wind up making any mistakes, that's actually okay. This color won't affect the white too much. It will a little bit, but not a huge amount. So we can get away with me going over the red area. So you can sort of see that I'm kind of painting just over where the red is, just to make sure that there's sort of like a shade in between where the red and the white connect. Again, we're going to let that dry, but in the meantime, we can paint the metallic areas. So as I said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of non-oil and non-oil gloss. Now, you could just go over it with non-oil, and that's perfectly fine. You could also go over it with non-oil gloss, and that's perfectly fine. However, with the non-oil gloss, I find it a little bit too glossy, just a little bit too much. Having a mix of both of it, for me, gives me that perfect mixture of not too glossy, but not too matte. Now it's up to you, you're on your personal preference. This is what I like to do. And again, just like I did with the contrast medium and the non oil mixture, I created a quick little one to one mix and labeled it. I probably suggest getting a labeler for this, but you know, as it gets the point across, it's telling me non oil and non oil gloss. It's a one to one ratio. Give that a good shake. And paint it on. So, using a medium layer brush, we're going to paint that straight onto the metallic areas. Now, with this one, because it is glossy, do be careful about getting it onto the white. At least with the other mix, we didn't have to worry too much. With this one, it's going to make the white a little bit kind of glossy, and with, or rather make the shade glossy. So do be a little bit careful. 
just going off like that. We're now at the home stretch. Only a few more things left to do. Now you could highlight the weapons, but with that gloss, I think we'll just let the natural shine take care of things. And besides, this is supposed to be battle ready. This is about as battle ready as you can get actually, but I want to take it a little bit further. Just finish it off. First things first is we're going to highlight the Imperial Quila, and that'll be an easy one and I'll show you how. And then we're going to do the eyes or the lenses of the helmet. Let's begin the finishing touches with Wild Rider Red. So we're actually going to dry brush this against each of the places that we've placed painted the Mephist in red. So Imperial Quila and just back here. So we're going to dry brush it on. So you could get a small dry brush, but the small dry brush I find is a little bit too big for this. So find yourself an old brush, an old brush where the bristles are sort of, you know, coming apart or whatever, and just give it a little snip, just, just a bit halfway or so. All right now you could try and clean and, you know, soak these brushes in what vinegar or whatever soap, what have you to try and return them back to the natural form. But look, you know, this brush of mine was, I, I paid like $2 to get, not even maybe a dollar. And well, it's, it's dead now. Might as well make use of it, right? So what we're going to do is, you know, I've already snipped it off. So what we're going to do is get a little bit of your Wild Rider Red. And like you would with dry brushing the white, just get a little bit on. Maybe I'll just get a bit about that much. So get out your paper towel. And we're just going to go up against it. So just, just... About that much will do. Get our model and just carefully, actually, let's just test it against the base. I think that maybe that's a bit much. Let's just wipe it away. There, there we go. That's about it. So go up against the Imperial Quila and just against it carefully, just dry brush it. Avoid getting it onto the white. Just ever so carefully. Doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. That looks about good for, for my purposes. Let's go over to the Indominus sort of symbol and just go against it. Run against it carefully. If you need to get more paint, go for it. Again, less is more. It's easier to apply more gradually than to try and remove the paint. With that done, let's go on to the lens of the helmet. So we're going to get a user contrast paint for this. We're going to use a thematic blue. And again, just like before with the black temple contrast, most of the pigmentation has pulled at the bottom of the pot. So we're going to give this a good old shake and then let's apply it to the eyes. We're painting the lens of a space marine, of a space marine's helmet, I should say. Generally, most people will paint, you know, say a, a storm host silver or maybe a white first or maybe even the color that they want so for example mephiston red or maybe even a wild rider red or any color even green you know warp green or something they'll just paint it straight on and then problem solved but for a beginner it is a little bit hard to paint those lenses especially how small they are so what we're going to do is use a contrast paint. As I said before, athematic blue. With a contrast paint, it's actually really easier to do the eyes. So we're going to paint this straight from the pot using our broken toed, um, our broken toed size one brush. I'm going to get a little bit on onto it, not too much, just a little bit. Turn the miniature upside down. Weirdly enough, this this does help quite a bit. And just get a little bit on and just against the eyes, just very carefully, just let it just paint it in. Just like that. We're going to let, because it's a contrast paint, it's going to pull everywhere. And because the miniature was already white, you know, it'll, it'll apply and tint the color and perfect. We'll be done. 
So let's just apply a bit more. We're going to let that dry, maybe apply a little bit more just to get a nice blue sort of tone. But I think that should do. And see, now if you do make any mistakes, that's all right. Just get, you know, wash your brush and just apply a little bit of water and try and get rid of most of it or maybe a tissue and just dab at it to get rid of it and then go again. If you really do make a huge mistake, just paint it all with one gray and go through the white. Luckily, this helmet is devoid of a lot of details, so we don't have to worry too much about having to fix things up. So again, just apply a little bit over to the eyes, just like that. Just like that. Let's rotate the miniature around again. Just this time going up against here. Something like, there we go, against the camera. There we go. One last thing I almost forgot. We've got to shade the purity seal. So we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. And let's just paint straight on from the part onto the purity seal, as well as the handle of the weapon. So we're going to use our medium layer brush. And just carefully, with a little bit on the brush, just a little bit, we're going to paint this wash all over it, including onto the seal itself. So, just like that. And then onto the handle. All that's left now is to apply your choice of transfers, or if daring, freehand the chapter iconography and symbols and base the model however you like. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. You can apply the techniques found here to any other miniature you wish. Maybe the Star Phantoms chapter who are also predominantly white or even some Age of Sigma miniatures with white armor like Stormcast Eternals or something. Check out our Twitter, link in the description below to find more pictures of my white scars. On that note, please like and subscribe Hit that bell button. If you have any feedback or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Fare thee well.